إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه أما بعد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر أمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ثم أما بعد الحمد لله we continue going over the tremendous book by the Imam the Mujaddid Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab Rahmatullah Alayhi and that is that book which is entitled Tafsir Kalimat Tawheed the explanation of the Kalima the statement of at tawheed in the last class we were discussing and going over the concept that when one says la ilaha illallah and they establish its meaning they establish this kalima then it will eradicate all forms and all types of shirk and in particular it will eradicate ibtal lil wasa'iq it will eradicate the concept of intermediaries meaning between the slaves and between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there is no need for such and this shirki concept will be eradicated like every other concept of shirk Imam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab he mentions he says that if we were to understand this with a complete understanding or if we wanted to understand this with a complete understanding then that will be by way of understanding two concepts two affairs we took the first of the affair but not the second of it the first of the affair as a reminder and in brief then this was to know that those kuffar that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he fought against those kuffar who their money and their blood was halal they used to believe in at tawhid al rububiyyah and the mere and pure belief in at tawhid al rububiyyah only is not enough to enter a person into islam but rather <clears throat> In order for an individual to be upon Tawheed, then they have to establish all of the categories of a Tawheed. Naam, a Tawheed al Rububiya, with Tawheed al Uluhiya, with Tawheed al Asma or Sifat. So, after we had understood this, then secondly, the Imam, Imam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab, Rahimahullah Ta'ala he mentions Walakin al Amr Thani. However, the second affair Huwa Ladi Kafarahum 
وأحل دماءهم وأموالهم. The second affair is that which in reality has rendered these individuals to be non-Muslims, has made their blood and their wealth halal. وهو أنهم لم يشهدوا لله بالتوحيد الألوهية. And that is because they did not testify nor bear witness to Allah with a tawheed al uluhiyya with tawheed al ilahiyya meaning that they did not establish a tawheed al uluhiyya and this is why they have yet to enter into islam this is why they have yet to enter into islam so the infringement upon a tawheed al uluhiyya they will not benefit an individual who believes in tawheed al rububiyya and we say quote unquote Right? Because if they truly believe in Tawheed al-Rububiyyah, then they will establish a Tawheed al-Uluhiyyah. Naam? So their acknowledgement and their agreement in Tawheed al-Rububiyyah, then this is not enough to enter them into Islam. Why? Because they have denied, rejected, obstinately, what? A Tawheed al-Uluhiyyah. Naam? Because they have not established a Tawheed al-Uluhiyyah, then this is why they are kufar. It is important that we understand this. And the reason is because like processes produces like results. If the process is the same, then the result is going to be the same. Do you understand? It's not going to be that uh, a particular cause will bring and produce different effects depending upon the people. No. If the process is the same, then the outcome will be the same. So if this is the concept that is applicable to them, that their mere belief in a tawheed al-rububiyyah without establishing a tawheed al-uluhiyyah was not enough for them, then likewise it will not be enough for other than them. It won't be enough for us. It won't be enough for those who live in our time, who establish a tawheed al-rububiyyah, but they don't establish tawheed al-uluhiyyah. It will not be enough. And it's important and it's incumbent that we understand this. As Sheikh Fawzan, ta'ala, he mentions in commenting upon this section, he says, لِأَنَّ هَذَا هُوَ, هو الْمَطْلُوبَ وَهُوَ التَّوْحِيدِ الْأُلُوهِيَّةِ He said, and because this is what is sought after, this is the point here, ma'am, is that the establishment of the Tawheed al-Uluhiyyah. Naam, the prophets and the messengers, they came to their people, calling their people to La ilaha illallah. Eh? At-Tawheed al-Uluhiyyah. They came to their people, calling their people to At-Tawheed al-Uluhiyyah. Naam, the prophets and the messengers, alayhimu salatu wasalam, they did not go to their people, calling them to At-Tawheed al-Rububiyyah. Why? Because you find the vast majority of mankind, they already believe in Tawheed al-Rububiyyah. Naam. So the prophets and the messengers, when they went to their people, they called their people to worship Allah and to worship Allah alone. They called their people to worship Allah and to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. What is the proof of this? What is the proof قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه الكريم ولقد بعثنا في كل أمة رسولا أن يعبدوا الله واجتنبوا الطاغوت الله تعالى and what's the proof person say وما الدليل what's your proof the proof is that Allah سبحانه وتعالى says in his noble book what translated means and verily we sent to every nation a messenger proclaiming worship Allah alone and stay away from the false deities. Worship Allah alone, and stay away from the false deities. This is what? This is a call to a tawheed al-uluhiyya. A tawheed al-rububiyya, when it is mentioned, it is mentioned as a delil for a tawheed al-uluhiyya. Naam? Because if a person acknowledges that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the only creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the only sustainer. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the only arranger of the affairs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the giver of life, the causer of death, so on and so forth, from the affairs of a tawheed al rububiyyah If a person acknowledges that it is Allah who does these things alone by Himself, then by default, the rational conclusion to this is the what? Is to establish a tawheed al uluhiyyah Allah Ta'ala is the only creator. Allah Ta'ala is the only one who deserves to be worshipped. Allah Ta'ala is the only sustainer. Allah Ta'ala is the only one who deserves to be worshipped. Allah Ta'ala is the only one who causes life and causes death. Allah Ta'ala is the only one who deserves to be worshipped. And if you look through the, uh, the Quran and you contemplate on it, then you will find this. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentions a tawheed al rububiyyah as a proof and an evidence to establish a tawheed al uluhiyyah. This is very important that we know and that we understand this. Naam, it is very important that we know and that we understand this. So, Sheikh Fawzan, ta'ala, he goes on and he says that what is intended and sought after is what is Tawheed al uluhiyya Naam, a Ifradullah bil ibadah to single out Allah alone with worship. Walaysa matlub Ifradullah bil Tawheed al rububiyya faqat. Ah, and it is not the requirement, nor is it sought after. To only establish a tawheed a rububiya only. Uh, it is not sought after to only establish a tawheed a rububiya, no. But rather to establish a tawheed a rububiya and a tawheed a uluhiya. Naam. Because as we mentioned, the person that in reality in reality, establishes a tawheed al rububiya then by default, they have to establish a tawheed al uluhiyya Naam? So, pay attention to what the Shaykh says next. He says, la min amrain. It has to be both. It has to be both. Naam? It has to be both. la min tawheed al rububiya Wa huwa mustalzam lit tawheed al uluhiyya we have to establish both. It must be a Tawheed al rububiyya which necessitates Tawheed al uluhiyya meaning that the person who has submitted themselves to, truly submitted themselves to a Tawheed al rububiyya then it necessitates that they submit themselves to a Tawheed al uluhiyya Naam? Tayyip. La budda min al-Tawheed al-Uluhiyya. Wa huwa mutubamman lit-Tawheed al rububiyya Wa la... ينفك بعضهما عن بعض أو ينفك بعضهما عن بعض. He says because a tawheed al uluhiyya, right? It has to be established because it comprises therein what a tawheed al rububiyya. They come together. They come together. If you acknowledge that Allah Taala is the only Creator, then only Allah deserves to be worshipped. Nothing else. If you establish that these other things have not created anything, they don't own the dominion of the heavens and the earth, they don't arrange the affairs, they don't cause life, they don't cause death, so on and so forth, then what? Then they are not to be worshipped alone. They do not deserve anything from worship. They don't deserve ibad. You understand? The only one who deserves ibadah is what? Is the Lord of everything, the one who provides for all, the one who causes life, the one who causes death, the one who arranges the affairs, so on and so forth. So it is a must that they come together in truth and in reality when a person actually establishes them, then they will come together. Man, when a person actually establishes them, then they will come together and they will not be separated from each other. They will not be separated from what? From each other. Naam, bayu. Imam Muhammad Abdul Wahhabi goes on and he says, "Wa huwa ay at tawheed, an la yudaa, wa la yurja, 
إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَحْدَهُ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ He says in that at tawheed and it meaning at tawheed that it is to call upon Allah to have hope and seek to have hope يعني in Allah نعم or as he worded it let me re-translate that it is to not call upon nor have hope in anything except Allah alone by himself except for Allah alone by himself نعم a, the Shaykh here, the Imam, he's pointing to some of the categories of at tawheed He's pointing to some of the categories of at tawheed Naam, but Paul Shaykh Fawzan, Hadallahu Ta'ala, A, at tawheed al Uluhiya, Yatadaman, Jamir al Ibadat. He said that at tawheed al Uluhiya, that it encompasses all of the types and categories of worship. نعم ولا يصرف لغير الله عز وجل and they are not to be given to other than Allah عز وجل anything from them يعني منها شيء nothing from them is to be given to other than Allah سبحانه وتعالى لأنه هو المستحق لها because Allah تعالى he is the only one who deserves them only Allah deserves worship only Allah deserves the categories of worship there is not a single category of worship that belongs to anything except Allah it only belongs unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala naam wa qala shaykh fuzan yani qala shaykh fuzan faman sarifa minha shay'an ghayri Allah li ghayri Allah fa innahu mushrikun wa law kana yaqul la ilaha illallah wa hadha huwa shahid Ma'am, this is the point of reference that we really want to draw home right here. Is that the Shaykh he mentions, he says that who he says that whoever gives anything from these categories of worship to other than Allah, then this person is a polytheist. This person is a polytheist, even if they say La ilaha illallah. Shaykh. The person is a polytheist, even if they say La ilaha illallah. Let me give you an example that we all could agree upon. Okay? Let me give an example we all could agree upon. We understand that Tawheed, Tawheed, Naam, is translated many times as what? Monotheism. Correct? It's translated as monotheism. Okay? Wait. Hold on to that. In the world right now today, the Christians, are they categorized as a monotheistic religion or are they categorized as a polytheistic religion? They are categorized as what? A monotheistic religion, right? Right. So even though they are saying that they are monotheist, in reality, are they? No. In reality, they are what? Polytheist. Because they what? Because they make shirk. So the mere claim of being a monotheist does not make one a monotheist. You understand the concept in general? Okay. Now, an individual who says, La ilaha illallah, but they worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They make dua to this wali, or they make dua to this tree, or they make dua to this jinn, or they slaughter for this jinn, or whatever the case may be. This individual in reality is what? Is a person who making shirk. Is a person who's making shirk. Is a person who is upon what polytheism. Even though they saying la ilaha illallah. So just because a person saying it doesn't make it such. Do we understand this concept and why this is very dangerous? Why this is very dangerous? You see the shaitan, he plays games with Bani Adam. Naam, by way of many factions from amongst the people. But as relates to us, which is more dangerous to us and closer to home for us is what is the Sufiya. The Sufiya. The Sufis. For lack of a better term. Naam. The Sufis. Because they twist things. They alter things and corrupt people's understandings. So as such that they think that as long as a person establishes a Tawheed al-Rububiyya, then that, that's all that's needed to be what? To be a muwahid, to be a person who establishes a tawheed. But we know from the texts, from the proofs and the evidences, from the Quran and the Sunnah that what? 
that this is not enough to make a person a muwahid. This is not enough for the establishment of a tawheed, but they have to establish all of the categories of a tawheed, not just tawheed al rububiyyah because what? It didn't work for the kuffar of old, so why would it work for the people now? You understand? Why would it work for the people now? Why would it going to be different? No, it's the same. Didn't work for them. It's not going to work now. Doing that back then was not the establishment of a tawheed and doing it right now today is not the establishment of a tawheed. Naam? But, the show, so the shaykh, he mentions, he goes on and he says, so that this individual, even if they saying la ilaha illallah, but they worship an other than Allah, then this individual, what? Then he is in actuality a mushrik. He's in actuality a polytheist. Even if they saying la ilaha illallah, bel, law kana ya'budullah bi anwa' min al-ibadat, but rather, even if he worships Allah with different types of worship, نعم, ما دام لم يخلص لله فيها كلها أو كلها فليس بمسلم. Even if, even if an individual, even if an individual worships Allah with certain types of worship, as long as he is not singling out Allah alone, in those cat in every category of worship, then that person is not a Muslim. Then that person, he is not a Muslim. Now, do we understand this? Now, I want you to understand something, and I want you to understand it well. A Sheikh Fawzan, Taala, he's talking about right now what the general ruling, because this is the general ruling, huh? Like it, who like it, hate it, who hate it, radhi yaman radhi, wa kariha man kariha. Who like it, who like it, hate it, who hate it. This is the general ruling. This is the general ruling. So I want everyone to understand this very well. This is not to say that we would apply this upon individuals who have been misled by the Sufis. Individual Muslims who have been misled by the Sufis uh, are plagued with any with with uh, a gross amount of ignorance and so on and so forth that we say in Ori Kufar. Somebody went and I seen him, he was making dua to Bedawi, he's a Kafir. So and so, but yani ba'ayne, an individual, particularly, and he's a Kafir. No, 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 no. 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 This is the general ruling. For this ruling to be applied to an individual specifically, huh? One is for the ulama. Okay? There has to be the establishment of the proofs and the evidences. There has to be establishment of the proofs and the evidences. What's the proof and the evidence for that? Is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Allah ta'ala, he says it means, and whoever contradicts the messenger, goes against the messenger, and here's the proof of, and here's the point of reference right here. After clear guidance had been made known to him. Huh? After clear guidance had been made known to him, and he follows the way other than the way of the believers, then we will leave him to that which he left himself to and into him into the fire and what a evil and worse of final destinations. The point of reference is that what? After clear guidance had been made known to him. So if a person just contradicting the Prophet, I said them, then this is not enough, yani, to, to make them leave the Islam. But they, after the, the, the hujjah has been established upon them, the proofs and the evidences have been established upon them, they understand the proofs and the evidences, and they remain consistent upon what they are upon, obstinately, and so on and so forth, then this, at this point, then the person becomes what a kafir. So there is a process, yani, and this is in the hands of the ulama. As the ulama, they used to teach it, they say, yani, uh, uh, takfir, yani, mughlaq, that the, the, uh, uh, the door, the door of takfir is closed, it's locked. The door of takfir is locked. And that the keys for this door, for the, to unlock the door, is with the ulama. It's with the ulama. So it is important for us to understand. You understand? It's important for us to understand these points. But the point is, is that what? The Shaykh is explaining the general principles so we know exactly how dangerous this situation is. And I want everyone to take it in the proper context and to understand that we're talking about the general principle. You understand? 
We don't want this to be no type of fuel used for any type of khariji, yani whatever. No, 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 no. The khawarij, they are the dogs of the hellfire, huh? to the end of it. Nothing we want to say is going to be no support for them. This is the general rule. What those khawarij don't understand is that the general rule is one thing and the application of that rule and applying that rule upon a specific and particular individual is something totally different. They make no differentiation, but there is a differentiation. And what's the proof and evidence? What the ayah we just recited, okay, a little while ago. So, I want everyone to understand that well. I don't want no one to get anything mis. Construed or yani to the end of it. Okay. As Sheikh for El Sheikh Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab, Rahmatullah Alayhi, he goes on and he says, Wala yustagathu bi ghayrihi, Wala yuthbahu li ghayrihi, Naam, Wala yunzar li ghayrihi, Wala la li malikin muqarrab, Wala nabi mursal. He said that there is no istigatha, there is no seeking help in times of peril, right? Or seeking relief. From other than Allah. There is no slaughtering for other than Allah. There is no taking oaths for other than Allah. Not an angel that is close nor a prophet that has been sent. And whoever seeks refuge in times of peril, they seek relief from other than Allah and only those things that Allah can grant. This is what is meant by they seeking relief. And seeking help in times of peril from those things that only Allah can grant. You understand? A person he's sick and he got a sickness and so on and so forth. You understand? And then he start calling upon Saint so and so, dead guy so and so in the grave to, to to cure him. That person can't cure him. Only Allah Taala can cure him. You understand? So this type of seeking help, this is shirk. This is shirk, right? If a person is in the middle of the ocean, now. And, 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 and no one is around them in the middle of the ocean and then they're calling upon Wali so and so, yeah Wali so and so, yeah Sheikh so and so, so on and so forth. That person can't even hear them nor have the ability to rescue them and to save them. This type of istighatha is what? This is shirk. This is shirk. You understand? So again, it's important that we understand this for more detail. I refer people to go back to those lessons, uh, about the anwar of ibadah. Naam. And inshallah ta'ala. Uh, there's more detail as relates uh, to these particular affairs. But, so whoever makes istighatha to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this individual he has, he has, he has disbelieved. وَمَنْ ذَبْحَ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ فَقَدْ كَفَرْ And whoever uh, he slaughters in the name of other than Allah, then yeah, this person is uh, has, has made disbelief. نعم. وَمَنْ نَظَرْ لِغَيْرِهِ فَقَدْ كَفَرْ And whoever takes an oath for other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this person has disbelieved. Huh? And what is similar to this? Yani the Shaykh he just mentioned some things as an example, not as restriction. So yani qis ala thalik. Use that as a frame of reference as relates to that in which is similar to it. Okay? So any other the categories of worship, if a person gives it to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then faqad kafar, then he has disbelieved. Right? وَالتَّمَامْ هَذَا أَنْ تَعْرِفْ أَنَّ الْمُشْرِكِينَ الَّذِينَ قَاتَلَهُمْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم كانوا يدعون الصالحين مثل الملائكة وعيسى وأمه وعزير وعزيرا نعم وغيرهم من الأولياء فكفروا بهذا مع إقرارهم بأن الله سبحانه هو الخالق الرازق المدبر. Allah. The Sheikh he says, and what will increase and complete and perfect you understanding this concept is to know that those polytheists who the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he fought against them. They used to call upon righteous people, or they used to call upon righteous individuals from the angels. And they used to call upon Isa. And they used to call upon his mother, Maryam. And they used to call upon Uzair. And other than them from the righteous ones. They were kuffar. 
even though they used to acknowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He was the creator, He was the sustainer, He was the arranger of the affairs. Okay? So going back, whoever gives anything from the categories of worship to anyone, mahma man kan, then this is kufr. As Sheikh Fawzani mentions, he says, a man fa'ala dhalika fa'innahu, meaning whoever does this, they, they're given, uh, 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 making oaths to other than Allah, or they are making istighatha to other than Allah, or they are slaughtering in the name of other than Allah, so on and so forth, that whoever does this, يعني, and that which is similar to it, فَإِنَّهُ يَكْفُرُ وَلَوْ كَانْ يَقُولْ لَا إِلَهَ اللَّهِ Then this individual, then they would have disbelief, even if they say in La إِلَهَ اللَّهِ لِأَنَّهُمْ لَمْ يُحَقِّقْهَا Because they have not established it. They have yet, uh, they have yet to establish La ilaha illallah. فَهُوَ مُتَنَاقِضُ This one, yani, he's in contradiction. He's saying one thing and then his action is doing something else. The shaykh, he says, كَيْفَ يَقُولْ لَا إِلَهَ اللَّهِ وَيَذْحُ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ وَكَيْفَ يَقُولْ لَا إِلَهَ اللَّهِ وَيَسْتَغِيثُ بِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ he said, how an individual is going to say La ilaha illallah, then they slaughter it in the name of other than Allah. How are they going to say La ilaha illallah, and they are seeking help in times of peril, but other than Allah, min al-amwaj, from those who are dead, wal ghaibin, those who are not there, wal jinn, wal shayateen, and they seeking help in times of peril from the jinn, from the shayateen, so on and so forth. Kayfa yaqul La ilaha illallah, wa yandhu li ghayri la. How are you going to say La ilaha illallah, and then you are taking oaths, in the name of other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, had a tanaqul. The shaykh, he said, this is a contradiction. This is a contradiction. You're saying one thing with your mouth and then you're limited doing exact opposite, polar opposite. Yeah, salam, this is a contradiction. So this is why it doesn't benefit these individuals. Now, it is, this is why it does not benefit uh, these individuals. So the shaykh, he was on and he mentions... The Sheikh Fuzan is commenting upon that last portion, which is very important for us to know and to understand, that these people from antiquity, who were polytheists of antiquity, they used to worship righteous people and righteous individuals from the angels, from Asa, from his mother, from Isaiah, and other than them, from the righteous ones, from the righteous ones. That's, that's who they used to worship. That's who they used to call upon. That's who they used to make du'a to. That, that, that's who they used to, yani, uh, uh, you know, make, take oaths in the name of and so on and so forth. You understand? Al Mushrikun, as Sheikh Fuzani mentions, he says, Al Mushrikun al Awwalun laysu kulluhum ya'abudun al Aslam. He said that the polytheists of the old, not all of them used to worship idols. They were not all idolaters. They were not all idolaters. Some of them was idolaters and they worshiped statues and that, but others, not all of them. Some of them didn't worship statues. Some of them didn't worship statues. Some of them worship angels. Some of them worship prophets. Some of them worship righteous people. They all didn't worship statues and idols. Okay? So they were different. They had they used to worship different things. Some of them, yes, used to worship idols. And statues. Uh, and from them were those who used to worship the malaika and from them were those who used to worship the prophets and some of them were those who used to worship the, the, the righteous ones but Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qataluhum kulluhum aw kullahum and the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he fought all of them and nabi Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he fought against all of them. Naam. Walam yufarriq baynahum. And he didn't make any distinction between them. He fought against them all. He made no distinction. He made no distinction. The one who worshiped the righteous ones, he didn't get a pass because he worshiped the righteous ones. The ones who worshiped NBA, he didn't get a pass because he worshiped NBA. The one who worshiped the, the angels, he didn't get a pass because he worshiped the angel. No. The one who worshiped the angel was the same as the one who worshiped a cow. The one who worshiped the righteous one were the same as the one who worshiped a rock. The one who worshiped yani, uh, 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 the, the angels and the prophets and the messengers were the same as the one who worshiped the moon and the star and the, and, and the sun. No distinction. No distinction was made. Do, do you understand? So it is incumbent and it is a must that we understand these things well. 
that a individual being a, 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 a polytheist is not restricted to just worshiping idols. It's not restricted to just worshiping statues. But whoever worships anything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he is a mushrik. He is a polytheist. Naam. And the, the Prophet sallallahu he made no distinction. No distinction. Naam. Walam yaqul. The Prophet said, walam, walam, wa, naam, walam yaqul. And he did not say, ma uqatil illa, la, illa alladheen, illa alladhi ya'budu al-asnaam. He said, he, he, he never said, I will only fight those who worship statues. He never said that. وَيَثْرُكُ الَّذِينَ يَعْبَدُونَ الْعُزَيْرًا أَوْ يَعْبَدُونَ الْمَسِيحِ أَوْ يَعْبَدُونَ الصَّالِحِينَ نعم oh, يعني, and, But we'll leave alone those who worship Uzair. We'll leave alone those who worship the Messiah. We'll leave alone those who worship the righteous ones. مَا فَرَّقَ بَيْنَهُمْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم made no distinction between them. He fought against all of them. Those who worship this and those who worship that. Listen, here we go right now. وَهَؤُلَاءِ الْقُبُورِيُونَ الْيَوْمِ يَقُولُونَ الشِّرْكَ عِبَادَةُ الْأَصْنَامِ But the grave worshippers today, you see, the grave worshippers today, they say that shirk is only the worship of statues. They say that shirk is only the worship of statues. That's what they say. It is incumbent. It is incumbent that we understand the truth and reality. Because you have individuals now who are striving to alter the truth with their lies and deception. Twisting of the facts. These individuals are trying to restrict polytheism to just idolatry. That's it. They worship the idols? Oh, he's a mushrik. Fight. And the one who worships a cow? What is he? Yes, and uh, the one who worships the, the, the moon? What is he? Fight. Leave alone the cow and the moon. The one who worships a righteous person? What is he then? If shirk is only the worship of statues, then the one who worships a righteous person, what is he? Sheikh Fozani says, these individuals from the the Sufis who call to great worship and the worship of the of the saints dead in the dead in the grave and, and that they say they say that worshiping the righteous individuals, then this is to draw you near unto Allah, and this is what will yani, connect you to Allah. And this is not shirk. That's not shirk. shirk Because shirk is only the worship of idols only. That's what they say. This is what they're teaching the people. This is why you have individuals who will say, La ilaha illallah, and then they go make dua to say Bedouin. They go make dua to Abdul Qadir Jalani. Yeah? They go make dua to, to, to this one and to that one from the awliya because they have been misled. They have been mistaught. They have been tricked into believing that shirk is only the worship of idols. Just like they have been tricked into believing that Tawheed is only Tawheed al Do you see the importance for, yani, the, why, why the ulama, they put so much importance on teaching the likes of these lessons and these materials and so on and so forth and writing books to, as, so as to explain to mankind the reality of the affair because you have so many from the shayateen that are trying to Yani, uh, mislead people by altering the definition of things so that they believe that they are upon that which is correct while they are in fact upon the epitome of that which is incorrect. They think by relabeling and labeling that which is wrong as being right makes it right. And we see this in our society, right? If we look at lesser examples, when I mean lesser examples, I mean of sins that are less than shirk. We see this all day long. 
they 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 miss they they relabel alcohol so it's not alcohol now it's it's, it's spirits it's you know uh you know so it's it's a cooler and so on and so forth it's hummer it's the same thing but they they they, they put a, a pretty name on it okay marriage is between a man and a woman okay they want to change that definition no 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 now marriage can be between a man and a man it could be between a, a woman and a woman. Yeah, subhanAllah. What's next? Between a man and his animal, between a man and a robot, between a man and his chair, between a man and his lamp, between a woman and, and I don't know, her car. I mean, subhanAllah. What, what, you know what? Come on, really. You, you understand? Just because you change the definition don't change the reality. That is a, that, that is a, 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 a perversion of the definition. That's not the real definition. Marriage is between what? A man and a woman. That's it. That's marriage. Between a man and a woman, and a man can have up to four wives. So a man and, 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 and her, 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 and her. Okay, that's marriage. Sit. Doesn't go beyond that. Sit. Doesn't change. Just because they were like it too. Modern family. Really modern family. Yeah, salam. Okay. Anyway. So this is with lesser examples. So now if you go back to the greater example of, of, of it, Tawheed. You cannot restrict Tawheed by saying it's just Tawheed al rububiyyah No. A Tawheed is the establishment of a Tawheed al rububiyyah and a Tawheed al uluhiyah and a Tawheed al asma al sifat That's, that's Tawheed. Naam. Likewise, a Shirk is not restricted to just the worship of idols, but rather what enters into that is the worship of anything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether it's an idol, or whether it's a, it's a celestial body, or whether it's an angel, or whether it's a righteous person, or whether it's a prophet or a messenger, if you worship anything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this is shirk. So the shaykh, he says, that they say that shirk is ibadatul asnaf faqad. The shaykh says, ya subhanallah. Oh subhanallah, how are you saying stuff like this? Al-Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, qatalahum jameer. The Prophet so I tell him he for all of them. So now let's weigh, okay? Now let's weigh, let's weigh the understandings. They saying that shirk and who is a mushrik is only the one who worships the idol. Whereas the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Nabiullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he fought against all of them. Those who worship idols, those who worship Angels, those who worship prophets and messengers, those who worship righteous people, the prophets I sell them fought against all of them. So whose understanding now are we going to take? The understanding of the astray Sufi or the understanding of Nabiullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? For the one who has an intellect, that's not even a question. It's not even a choice. It's not even a choice. We're going to go with the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Naam. The Prophet said, Send me forth against all of them, those who used to worship Aladina Yahmadun al Aslam, Wal Ladina Yahmadun al Malaika, Wal Ladina Yahmadun al Masih, Wal Ladina Yahmadun al Uzairan, Naam, Wal Ladina Yahmadun al Awliya, Wal Salihi, Walam Yufurk Baina Hum, Lianna Hulaysa Baina Hum, Yani Furk, Fil Hakika. Naam. And this is the reality. It, 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 the Shaykh, he says that the Prophet Sallallahu he fought against those who worship idols, he fought against those who worship angels, he fought against those who worship the Messiah, he fought against those who worship Uzair, he fought against those who worship the, uh, the righteous people, he, because, and he made no distinction between them. Why? Because in reality, there is no difference between them. In reality, there is no difference between them. Changing the name of something don't change. The reality. Changing the label don't change what it is. Naam. So it is incumbent and it is important that we know we understand these things so that when these evil shall clean from the human beings, meaning these great worshiping Sufis, try to call us. Whether that call be direct or indirect. Direct meaning that they're speaking to us specifically or whether that call is an indirect call that we, yeah, you know, a person may stumble against their lecture on YouTube or, yeah, you know, I mean, whatever. The person may post something on Facebook or Twitter or, yeah, you know, whatever. I don't care the platform. You understand? But you happen to stumble across some talk of a Sufi and he's talking about that stuff to understand the evil of this individual. 
to understand that this individual is on something that is contrary than what the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was upon. To understand that bila shak bila ray, we don't want to hear nothing for the likes of this individual. When a person understands the like of this good, then would you find any problem? Would you get yani? Uh, what do you say? Shy? Ex would, would you get shy, or would you feel ashamed? That if the likes of this evil type of person is talking, for you to put your fingers inside your ears. Who will be ashamed to do something like that? Nobody. If you understand what, what the evil come out of a person's mouth, you put your fingers in your ears. I won't hear none of that. Make it out of here with that. You understand? So when a person understands this good, then they will understand maybe a little better the position of the Salaf when they used to avoid the sittings of Ahl al-Bid'ah. When they will put their fingers in their ears, when the people of innovation will try to talk to them, when they used to boycott the people of innovation, then now maybe we understand a little better why that what is the case. Because you find when you examine what these individuals are calling the people to is nothing good, and that's being nice about it. Yeah, and then the Imam Rahmatullah Alayhi he goes on to. Getting to the next issue, but bithnilahi ta'ala, we will save that until the next class, inshallah ta'ala. Fa naktafi bihad al qadr wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa jazakumullahu khayra.